All right, we're going to get going here. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Pat Alexander with the Charlotte Street Foundation. I manage the programming here in Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you all for joining Peer. This is our sixth edition this year. And the idea of Peer is to, one, to spotlight Kansas City artists that are, um, you know, taking some chances, doing some interesting things in the community, uh, might have a current show up, but also it's a way for, I feel like to connect artists of different generations. Um, so tonight we've got one artist who is established. Another one is what would be called emerging. And the other one is just um, doing the day to day. Looks like we got somebody else here. Oh, there's Macau, wonderful. Macau, add your video or your turn on your video so that we can see you. There's my cat. Anyway, so we have these three artists tonight, and uh, the way that we're doing this in these times is we're doing this a virtual broadcast. So each artist has taken the time to put together a five-minute presentation that's been pre-recorded. So we're going to air each one of those, and then I'll have a conversation with these three artists afterwards, where they can talk a little bit, ask some questions, and whatnot. So this is all just a short and sweet intro way to kind of find out about artists that are in your community and uh, hopefully we connect some of you. So with that, uh, my colleague Hope is going to start this off and we'll start with Jay Norton. Hey, Charlotte Street friends and family. Thanks for um, inviting me into your uh, living rooms and your tiny plastic phones. Um, I make paintings uh, about what it means to be a person and uh, this is the most recent one that I've done. I'm going to kind of work backwards. Um, I just finished this one not too long ago. It's, um, you know, I inserted myself into the Elliott Smith album cover for Either Or. He um, sadly died of suicide, um, stabbed himself in the heart, which is pretty gnarly. And so there's a knife on my lap in this painting. And, um, you know, it's kind of dark, but I find that if I get it out on the canvas, then it's no longer in my heart and mind. So that's why I made it. At the end of uh, 2019, kind of beginning of 2020, I had this vision um, of a, a figure in a hoodie out in nature um, with no face. And I didn't really know what it meant or why um, I kind of had to do it. But I started um, working on this series and then, you know, shortly thereafter, the virus hit and, um, and you know, the paintings of kind of isolation and alienation and loneliness um, in the context of the virus and the pandemic, it all sort of started making sense to me. Um, and that happens quite a bit where I don't know why um, I, feel compelled to do something, but as I'm doing it, uh, some, some meaning is revealed to me. And, um, you know, I'm not saying it's magic, but it feels magical. Uh, this is another one kind of in that same vein where I just felt like I wanted to paint a bighorn sheep and, uh, I started doing it and I was going to do this thing with the horns where, um, it's like anti-corporate thing. And then that seemed stupid, um, and, but I couldn't just have a painting of a bighorn sheep because that would be boring. So I um, put the third eye on this guy and that created a triangle and triangles symbolize order, but you can't have order without chaos. So then I put this red um, inverted triangle on there, which kind of all tied it all together and made it make, make more sense. Um, I wanted to paint some hands because um, I read painters always saying that um, it's harder to paint hands than it is faces. And I wanted to, uh, just to have a challenge and to kind of push the skills. And so, um, you know, I've got friends that have interesting hands and I recruited them to be the uh, hand models. And um, it was challenging and it was fun. Uh, and I liked the way it turned out. Um, I did two or three of those. This one, um, my dad died about 10 years ago, really unexpectedly. 
uh, kind of threw everybody for a loop. And I realized several months after that happened that I was carrying his death around with me wherever I went. And I realized that we're all carrying our own deaths around with us uh, wherever we go. And so that's kind of where this came from. And, you know, it's real personal to me, but it's also universal. And that always seems to make for a decent painting. Um, this one's from around the same time. And um, it's basically me kind of saying goodbye to uh, my youth, letting go of, uh, you know, drinking and smoking and risk taking, um, you know, taking off the old rock and roll jean jacket, uh, just kind of growing up and moving on. And it sort of represents a transition in my life, but it's a, it's called ruin because it's like a man's ruin type painting from the, you know, tattoo type uh, genre. This is a painting that um, I made for a friend of mine that I um, that I talk philosophy with quite a bit. He's an artist. He's a sculptor, Spencer Schubert, and uh, it took me about a year to make this painting. I, it was during a time where I couldn't paint very much. Um, you know, it was a lot of work, and then at the end, I just gave it to him. Um, you know, it was made with no idea that it would ever really be shown or um, or anything like that. And I think it's one of the the best paintings I've done. Uh, people look at this one and think that it's some like Pirates of the Caribbean thing, but um, really it's about meditation. Um, it's called Ride because it's about riding the waves of thought, riding the waves um, of your mind, and it can be stormy on the outside, but smooth sailing on the inside if you if you are in control of that environment. Um, but I use a lot of, you know, nautical type symbols on that. Um, last but not least, I snuck in a two for here. These are both of my kids. If you paint what you know and you paint what you love, then I think you'll be a successful uh, and you'll be a happy artist. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Jay. That's amazing. Um, next up, we'll to Mikhail's Hope. Hello everyone, my name is Mikhail Elrod. I primarily work with textiles and the last couple of years I've been doing a mix of textile art with painting. Um, lately it's been oil paint, in the past I've also used acrylic. This first image is a detail of a piece that I did for a book called Temple of Medusa that'll be published in February that is about venerating Medusa as a goddess rather than the typical villainization that she's received through um, classic mythology. Um, but the rest of the images besides the very last slide are all images of this um, series that I've been working on the last couple of years and I will probably continue to work on indefinitely while I work on other pieces as well that um, is highlights the voices of people in the Kansas City community who were working in justice and equity. Um, and I will talk more about them at my artist talk at the Kansas City Artist Coalition on Friday, this Friday at 6, the 24th. But since we have limited time, I just wanted to give you kind of a brief, you know, um, bio, I guess, of myself. I got my degree um, in furniture design in 2005 from Heron School of Art. And I intentionally didn't get my degree in painting because I knew I already loved painting. It was my very first love. Um, and for one, I thought furniture design would be more practical. And also when I went and took my first furniture design class, there was basically all men except for me and one other woman. And um, my mother had also graduated with her degree in furniture design and was again, one of only one or two women in the program. So I wanted to do it as a challenge to myself, but also as a challenge to the professors and the men who were in charge of um, that degree, just to prove you know, that women were as capable. And that kind of um, challenge to the patriarchy, I guess, is uh, kind of something that's carried through all of my work. Um, 
I started working with textiles a few years ago, seven or eight years ago. Um, and I was really frustrated with the idea that it was still kind of considered kitsch or crafty. Um, so when I, when I would try to, you know, apply to art fairs and stuff, like there wasn't really a, a, an appropriate um, category for what I was doing or the quilting, you know, world, it wasn't exactly right for that because some of them are really strict about what a quilt exactly is. And I, and, um, I'd seen a lot of like really beautiful art quilts and I'd seen a lot of like really beautiful embroidery and I knew that I didn't fit in either of those categories, but I did know that all of those were still fine art and that a lot of men, um, and some women that I encountered that were painters kind of viewed my art as, as not really, I guess, fine art. And that was frustrating for me. And, and, um, so I continued to work with it kind of as a, a challenge to that kind of white masculine mentality of what is considered fine art. And, and as I've been working with textiles, you know, I've discovered so many really incredible textile artists who are being taken seriously and their work is being shown in museums. Like mo most recently, um, Bisa Butler showed her work at the Chicago Arts Art Institute, and she's an incredible artist who does quilted portraits. And um, so, um, yeah, I guess I just don't didn't want it to be seen as women's work and that's part of the reason why I missed when I missed painting I didn't want to just paint again I wanted to make sure that I still included textile work with that and I have three daughters so you know women and um challenging you know white masculine ideas of pretty much everything is a huge part of my life and the lessons that I try to teach them. And that's also partly why most of my work is of women as a subject as well. Awesome, thank you, thank you. I'm um, hoping next we could pull up Patrick Rocha Jr., please. Patrick Rocha here. Um, gonna show you some random works from the past year. This is a painting I did on my cat, Donnie. It's called Donnie and Susan. Um, no particular meaning behind this one. Just uh, it's a playful, playful illustration. Um, I turned into a painting. Um, the guy's always hanging around me, so I got a lot of drawings of him out and about in the studio. This one I hung up. Figured I'd make it the first one to show you guys. Um, this one's called Trust Mask. It's a, a style I've been working in recently with graphite. Um, kind of like mut mutated shapes, stuff that's kind of free flow, free flow drawing, just straight out of the head. Um, no particular meaning behind these works either. It's just uh, kind of just free flow drawing. And uh, got a lot of these laying around too. Kind of a series I got going on with these. Um, these are actually collaborations um, that I did with my father, Pat Rocha Sr. Um, He's a big influence on my, my life. Uh, he's a painter, and uh, he's pretty good. And it's fun <laughs> to work with him, trade stuff, trade canvases back and forth and whatnot. And these I kind of all just put together. And um, they all kind of are different, different style than we usually work in. Um, this is a magazine cover I did. Um, for 785 Magazine, which is a, a local magazine in Topeka. And uh, it's for the winter issue of 2020, which is kind of when COVID was really going on. And the illustrations of a girl pulling her mask down. It's actually a portrait of my friend Becca. But um, I thought it fit for the times. And uh, it's an interesting time that we're living in right now. Uh, this next one is a painting I did called Eric. Um, I thought of this guy that I used to go to school with, and uh, his name was Eric, and he put me on to kind of abstract work and getting out there and using my illustration style and 
and uh, going a different direction. Nothing figurative, just uh, an experiment. I've been experimenting a lot lately with stuff, and uh, I kind of owe a lot to that guy, Eric. Um, this is a drawing I did, an illustration I did, of uh, E.T. and uh, a family. Um, I'm really kind of one of those nostalgic guys. I, I grew up in the early 80s, and and uh, I basically was obsessed with E.T. when I was a kid. And uh, this is my little homage to the alien. And uh, this one is basically a picture of a bunch of zines I did over the past few years. Um, me and my brother, Luke Rocha, he put me on to making zines. And we've been doing it for years. And um, I, do, I do them occasionally, every once in a while. It's not like something I practice hardcore like a lot of people I know do. They really go, go to the limit with it. And I'm, I'm just obsessed with the culture. Whenever I can do them, I do them. Um, this next piece is an uh, illustration I did for a poster design that never got printed. Kind of got shelved, but um, I like the image. It's just weird. It's a kind of portraiture meets the alien stuff I do. Um, and uh, it's just another one of those free free fall drawings that just comes out of my head and I add figure to it makes it more interesting um i'm in a, i'm really in the fashion illustration whenever i can get around to doing it i do it for friends and for myself um i've been obsessed with fashion illustration ever since i was a teenager um i love clothes and i love color and i love when i see artists experiment with it and you know it's just all over the place these days and it's just really inspiring to see all the new stuff that comes out in fashion, it's just kind of amazing. So I like to draw it. Uh, this last one is just a picture I did from a portrait series. Um, it's of uh, my friend Ashley. Um, I get hired on the side a lot to do portraits and uh, they're really fun to do. I always add my own juice to it. And um, you know, this one's graphite and paint and uh, just uh, part of a series. Everything's a part of a series with me. I move around a lot with uh, mediums, and um, that's just how I like to do it. Fantastic. Thank you all for creating that. <clears throat> As you can see, three very different artists, but I was definitely, um, I saw something there in all three of them, and I think it was, there was just this mysticism of these characters that, that you're all working with. I found kind of interesting, but you all have very tight hands too. My first question I ask is, um, you all keep a sketchbook. And if so, what, what's the most recent thing you're drawing? I don't keep one. You don't? Really at all. I mostly, um, I just get kind of words in my head and pictures in my head and I'll kind of write it down on a napkin or scrap of paper or something and carry it around with me and then eventually decide to do something with it but um i'm envious of the people that constantly keep their hand going and and keep a sketchbook and have that to fall back on and look at but yeah. i don't have that you can paint hands though try <laughs> how you Mikhail? i work the same way as jay pretty much yeah. um uh i keep like a journal by my bed and a journal in our kind of main living area where if I think of something I write it down but I don't usually do any sketches until I'm right like mentally and emotionally ready to get going great because otherwise I'll never do it <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. how about you Pat I, I guarantee oh I, I'll guess go on oh I have plenty of sketchbooks um I I have the OCD where I have to draw everywhere I go um whenever I go to a restaurant with with anybody, I'm always the guy at the table who's not participating in the conversation sometimes because I'm always drawing. And yeah, I have uh, a lot of sketchbooks, boxes and boxes of them. Um, I have to draw all yeah. the time. It's just was, the way. I was gonna jokingly say, I, "Is everything a sketchbook to you?" But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Pretty that. Much. I love <laughs> that. It's great. Um, 
And so Pat, Pat's uh, just, you know, he's in Topeka, Kansas, um, but has resided in Kansas City, New York, and LA, I think a bit too, but uh, currently isn't there. So um, don't see as much of his work as, as we have. So we're hoping to see more of that. Do um, you have some upcoming things coming up? Yeah, well, I'm working on a project right now with my dad, and that's why I'm here actually, because I moved here a few years ago for family reasons. Um, uh, we had a sick grandmother, she has dementia, and she recently passed over the summer. But um, I was only planning on staying here for a couple months, but that turned into three years. And um, I kind of put my, my art career on the back burner just to do family stuff. Yeah. And mainly what I've been doing is just illustrations for magazines and t-shirt companies, a lot of stuff like that, nothing really gallery oriented lately um there's a thing here in topeka called arts connect and they give out awards every year and they gave me and my brother and my dad a legacy award last year which was a really big surprise because i've only lived here for three years and my family the rocha family is from here originally so we have a lot of relatives here that are also artists and like my uncles they're phenomenal and um uh, we kind of all just came together and it's kind of, we're kind of just doing it locally here for now. Great. Yeah. Love to make it our way down to Topeka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm in Kansas city all the time. I mean, I, I'm from Kansas city, but yeah, right now I'm kind of like got my thing going on here. That's great. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. And uh, Jay, I know you just opened up a show last weekend. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, I do haven't showed maybe in a while. Um, I was kind of curious how that came to be. Um, well, that was the, the show that opened last Friday at the Trap Gallery. Um, that's the first solo show that I've had in 10 years. The last one I did was in 2011 and, um, you know, was raising kids and working on a business and, you know, doing all kinds of other things. Um, so the paintings were few and far between. Um but then the world shut down in, you know, March of 2020, which was terrible, um, you know, for lots of reasons. But um, but for the first time in my entire life, I had, you know, time and nothing to do. And so um, that really kickstarted me back painting again. And so um, I was doing it every day and it was awesome. Uh, and, and kind of up until just recently, you know, have, have kept it running. And um, that's good. I'm going to try to keep that momentum going and, and not, uh, not slack off anymore. Well, it's, it's been recorded. So, so yeah. Like, Plus my kids are, growing, <laughs> my kids are grown up now. They don't want to hang out with me anymore anyway. So do they I'm, like, I'm back. do they like your paintings? Uh, do they understand the subject matter? No. And my son doesn't like the painting of him with his no shirt on, you know, cause he's a teenager and it's not that cool, but, um, I think they do like them and, you know, Someday they're going to be forced to live with them in their houses <laughs> for eternity. <laughs> you like Pat, uh, McCarrie, you uh, use uh, you have a show up. You were saying too, um, and I, I'm assuming you are prolific as well during these times. I'm guessing. Um, yeah. I'd also, be curious um, the inclusion of your kiddos as well, and, and to know how you're picking some of the subjects of the women that you're working with. So I loaded um, you with the question. When I started it, I knew, um, well, okay, I'll backtrack a little bit because in, in March last year, I started following Hakima Payne on Facebook because I joined this confronting whiteness group. And so I knew I wanted to use her as a subject. Um, and then some of the other people I had thought about, but I kind of reached out to friends and asked them, you know, who they thought was like doing great work and so it was kind of a poll I guess but um yeah the rest of my work other than that series I mostly use pictures of friends and family <laughs> which doesn't make for a very diverse uh series usually <laughs> yeah um I, I noticed that a lot of your the women seem like they're holding flowers or different sort of it looks like there's some symbol 
capitalism things. And I was just curious at that. And I've kind of caught that with, you know, Jay has that going on a lot too, that always pulls me in to kind of figure out the puzzle a little bit. So I was curious of some of that, if that was, if there were any references or any of that or how those are chosen. Um, I was kind of trying to reference, um, I was raised Catholic. So I was trying to reference some of that Christian iconography, like, especially there's a lot of, you know, images of like Jesus with his hands in certain ways, or um, a lot of, especially in Catholic symbolism, there's a lot of like the Virgin Mary, who's, she's always holding something. So mostly that came from that, but also um, I wanted each subject to have things surrounding them that um, kind of evoked their personality or things that they stood for. So that's mostly what the the objects are in each one. Nice. Well, I'd like all of you to be able to ask each other maybe a question. Like I said, this is super fast, but I just wanted you to be able to meet each other, but maybe you saw something in the other person that you'd like to ask the other guys. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I was thinking about it before we started, and I was going to ask how your artistic practices have changed since, well, really in the last year and a half or so, not with just with the pandemic, but with just everything going on. But Jay, you kind of answered, but yeah, Pat, I guess I'm interested in what you have um, Well, I've definitely been doing a lot more work um, because, I mean, well, before the pandemic, I was still in my studio a lot. I mean, I don't really have that big of a social life here. Um, there's really not that much of me to, not much for me to do that I'm interested in besides art here. So the pandemic really thrusted me into like trying new things, like getting back into oil painting, which I abandoned for years. And um, just cause I used to just draw all the time and uh, getting back into painting and just reading a lot, researching. I get a lot of inspiration from movies. I've watched a lot of movies, basically just nerding out and um, not, not really worrying about the outside world as much basically helps me just focus on my craft. And I mean, as, as corny as it sounds, it's like, you know, when you spend a lot of time alone, it's kind of selfish, but I mean, you could get a lot, you learn, learn a lot about yourself and more ideas. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, but yeah, yeah, the pandemic, it's it's affected, I think, everybody differently. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm naturally kind of a, a hypochondriac, so it's easy for me to stay inside and not, you know, venture out in the world as much. Yeah. Um, Jay, do you have any questions for this? The others? Uh, not really. I was I'm I'm really happy and honored to uh, to be with with both of these guys and um i love both of their work wasn't as familiar as i should be with either one of them but i've been been checking them out and um you know i love i love artists i love to hear artists talk about why they do what they do and how they do what they do and so um no it's just been a great conversation right yeah likewise i mean i wasn't really familiar with your guys work really until recently my brother actually uh, told me that, Jay, I was actually at your Charlotte Street show years ago. I didn't know, I didn't know you then, but yeah, um, I really liked your work there, but I, I didn't really know that many people because I just moved back in, into town from college. But yeah, your work's great. And, and uh, Cal, yeah, your work's, I'm also, I was raised Catholic, very straight Catholic, and that stuff seeps into my work sometimes. Um, I see that in all three of your guys. Yeah, it, I mean, like, <laughs> iconography like, 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 or whatever, and and all that. Like my my dad, especially, he's he's um, a very devout Catholic, and he Same paints time. very very religiously. Like it's very um, it's his life basically, and uh, I learned a lot from him. And you know, growing up, I was an altar boy and all that, and I mean. It was interesting to grow up that way and how it it kind of has made its way into my art and my illustrations and everything. Paint but, what you know, right? Yeah, paint what you know. Yeah. As a character, uh, I feel like there has though been sort of this person in these things that's hooded like in a lot of your paintings going back 
further even like is that typically you like represented in a lot of those would you say well it is and it isn't i mean i i don't have a studio i i have always done this like in my basement or in my house and so i'm always like using myself as the model and like you know setting up the camera timer or whatever and run around and trying to take reference photos and things and so they're me but they're not necessarily like self portraits sure sure um but i also wear a hoodie all the time so okay <laughs> <laughs> and the okay, you're in Kansas City Kansas right uh -huh. yeah and there's a lot going on over there it seems like starting to happen yeah well we just moved over here in January which now that i say that out loud that's pretty long ago <laughs> But we, we, we haven't done much, but I, uh, I, I want to check out there. I know that they have a good little third or first Friday scene going on downtown. And I've been walking my dog a lot more recently. And I've seen some cool stuff happening over there. So I kind of need to get in on the case. There's here. some great murals around over there. I think you would would be pretty inspirational to you too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's Jose yeah, there's, 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 there's also a first Friday in Topeka too, like that no one really knows about, but they get down here. They have a whole art scene here, which is um, coming up and a lot of murals going up and everything. Nice. It's a small city and uh, no one really thinks about it, but it's definitely got an interesting art scene going on here. And my brother, Luke Rocha, he's a fellow Charlotte Street award winner from, I don't remember which year, but um, he lives here too, and he uh, has his own studio. He does more, Pat, you know, he does like sculptures and crazy yep. Yep, yep, collages. Yep. His work is awesome. But um, yeah, he's here too. Me and him and my dad, we all have our own houses respectively in our own studios and, and we all do different work. So I, I like it and we have, you know, eventually the body of work that we're, we've been doing for the past couple of years We'll bring to Kansas City eventually, and look forward you know. to that. Yeah, Mikhail, the, um, So your show at KCAC, you said it's closing this weekend. So uh, is your studio over there too? Uh, that's or part of the reason why we moved over here. Is uh, I I moved my studio home. I had been in the West Bottoms before, okay. and so now um, I have a space in the attic over our garage. <laughs> so right now. My studio space is in the front room of our yeah. main living area because it's too hot. You're all but house painters. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very cool. Uh, well, like I said, this is a, meant to be a very short and sweet, and it goes by super duper fast. But again, what I, I just want everyone who's out there in the Facebook worlds and watching this, uh, just hopefully you take the time to go check out their websites or Instagrams and find out more about what they're doing. Uh, they all have great bodies of work right now that are going out and I know it's hard to pick the right ones and all the things that you want to show if it's only the restriction is they could only show 10 slides and uh, so they did a great job I thought really well-rounded representing all the kinds of things that you're into and so yeah I just encourage all of you to get out trap galleries open KCAC that's our um, yeah Kansas City Artists Collective and if you want to go down to Topeka <laughs> way down there and hang out at the Roach's house. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, thank you all so much. And thanks for all for tuning in. And I hope to see you all out in the real world and at your art shows and keep doing what you're doing. So thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yep, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, have a good night. Bye. You too.